I always thought I was pretty good at city builder games. Well, competent at least. Workers and Resources Soviet Republic has humbled me, proving that I am in fact a disaster. As the name implies, it's about building a fully functional and self-sustaining Soviet satellite republic. What does that mean? Well, your people don't want money. They want to be provided for. They want jobs, housing, recreation, culture, all the things that keep a human ticking. You give them that, and they will lend their unwavering loyalty to your cause. Everyone wins. The fact of the matter is, building a socialist utopia is actually very difficult. How do you meet their needs? Where does the food come from? And more importantly, the booze. You can import essentials from your neighbors, or heaven forbid, the West, but that's only going to put food on the table for so long. At a point, you're going to have to find a way to produce and create everything your populace wants. That's not easy. That requires industry. Industry requires planning. The right resources in the right places. Logistical systems. Transport links. Your workers won't just pull a car out of their pocket and go. The cars need to be built. Sold. Maintained. Citizens have children. Children need looking after. You'll need to create state infrastructure to look after kids from infancy right up until they can hold a pickaxe. And at which point they join the workforce. You're doing all this whilst making sure loyalty to the cause is strong. All it takes is a few teachers with dangerous western ideals for it all to come crashing down. To prevent that, you'll have to employ the secret police to stomp out the naysayers. To put it plainly, think City Skylines meets Factorio, and you're on the right track. This is not going to be a game for everyone. It's demanding, intricate, meticulous. Not for everyone, but everything to some. If you relish challenges, love production chains, and have patience and determination in spades, well then you're in the right place by checking this game out. Let's have a look at my first Republic, what I learned, where I failed, and what this game has to offer. Your people may blindly follow you as their most glorious leader, but they still have wants and needs. Homes, jobs, recreation, leisure, all of that. As city planner, it's up to you to decide how and when to provide. I opted to go from the middle out. Build a nice city center first. I'd think about industry later. The first thing to note about this game is that you're in charge. That may sound silly, but really, you're in charge. You build the houses, you build the factories, you designate all of it to whoever you want and however you want. In other titles, people might just pick a job that sounds right for them. No, not here. If you tell someone they're going to mine coal, they will mine coal. Unless they've got a university education, in which case they will teach people how to mine coal. Your population's list of requirements isn't too overwhelming initially. A bit of food, some alcohol, something to pass the time while they're not in the mines. Creating these goods will be outside your scope at first, but you can import them from your neighbors. Then they'll want culture, sport, restaurants, cafes. These all need to be close, they need to be affordable, and they need to have the manpower and resources necessary to function. Before long, people will realize that their life is actually pretty good. At this point, it doesn't hurt to get the secret police up and running to remind people that you are the reason their life is so great. As your republic grows, you can send workers to universities to educate future generations and research new technologies. Or send them to the party headquarters where they will find ingenious new ways to manipulate or uh, govern the populace. People won't travel far so you have to plan all important infrastructure within walking distance. For when that's unfeasible, you'll need to create bus lines and transport links to take citizens from A to B. While there were some complications here and there, this felt very grounded as a city builder. Everything has a purpose. The building design might not be for everyone, but I've grown to like brutalism. It's very efficient. Say what you will about commie blocks, you can fit a hell of a lot of workers in them. So your town is functioning and your citizens thriving. But all that importing, researching and providing for your people costs a pretty penny. And you aren't making any money. Sure, in a perfect socialist regime, there's no need for money. But tell that to the companies you're importing food from. Seeing as I had all these lovely attractions dotted around, I figured an easy ruble could be made from tourism. Build it and they will come. 
right? Well, no. If you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. Tourists don't just arrive. They'll wait at the border and mill around for a while. You have to sort out their transportation around your glorious republic. Set up bus stops. Buy a bus. Set its designation to bring said tourists to the hotel. Better yet, set up a train line. Now this was something which I thought would be quite manageable. It was not. It was the biggest logistical hurdle so far. I just about managed to scrape together something almost functional, and I used that to take tourists to and from the border. But even as people were frequenting my hotels, restaurants and stores, I wasn't making anywhere near enough to be sustainable. This is the point where I had to stop and work out how did Soviet countries make money? seizing the means of production, collective farming, industrial manufacturing. I should have known that one. Well, guess I should go do that then. First things first, industry. All around your republic are hidden nodes and resources. When you find one, make a note, because that'll be an ideal spot for some industry. In most cases, that ideal plot of land will be quite far away from that lovely town centre you built. So you can set up complex transit lines of buses and trains to ferry people back and forth, or just build a new town around the coal mine. I went with option B. The act of getting coal has several steps. Dig the coal, refine the coal, store the coal, and now what? Well, you can either sell it as it is to shakily prop up the economy, or you can feed it into something else. Find iron, dig the iron, refine the iron. Feed both those industry loops into each other and you produce steel. Although chances are these two production hubs will be quite far away from each other. So you'll need to organize a way to get the iron and coal into the same place. Building a rail connection that connects the two points and ferries resources back and forth is probably smart. I just built a really long conveyor. So you're making steel, you're generating jobs. What do you do with the steel? Well, you can once again use that to create something else. Cars, trucks, aeroplanes, buildings, which is great and all, but it wasn't going to help me be self-sufficient this early on. My people needed to eat, and while generally not fussy, they probably wouldn't eat steel. Next step is to look at the second tenant of building a successful Soviet Republic, collective farming and an agricultural industry. And once again, more puzzles to solve. Where is the workforce coming from? What do I do with the end result? Farms need machinery and crops need time. Once harvested, they'll go through their own resource chains, be processed into food, alcohol, or fabric for clothing. To get each resource from A to B, you'll need a small fleet of cargo trucks, each assigned to the right place and carrying the correct resources. Placing down farms is step one, but the options for what happens with your bountiful harvest are numerous. A stretch of farmland can funnel into several different industries, all providing the essentials for your population. After a bit of trial and error, you'll comfortably be producing all you need to stock your stores and serve your pubs. But that's the easy part. You have all the goods, but they're lining your storerooms. Your people can't access them. To enact the final step in being self-sufficient, you have to distribute them. And this is where the game goes from being a city builder with some out there ideas to a different beast entirely, a logistical tour de force. In other games, producing the goods is enough, but not here. No, you'll need to buy or build an armada of trucks and organize delivery lines to all your stores. Either you meticulously plan each route or you set up a central warehouse and distribution office and have them stock up all assigned workplaces. Trucks will only take you so far, however. Before long, you'll need to start thinking bigger. Railways transporting goods and connecting hubs. You'll have to manage congestion, schedules, and work out how in the hell traffic lights work. This to me was mostly trial and error with a lot of error. Trying to keep all the resources moving, going to the right place, stopping potential pileups on your train line, it is a Herculean task. Every time it went wrong, I knew I couldn't blame the game, only myself. A semaphore in the wrong place or programmed incorrectly can be the difference between trains running like clockwork or boxing each other in at the customs house. It can always be fixed. The question is how? I said earlier this game isn't for everyone. If all I've just said has you thinking, that sounds awful, then chances are this isn't the right city builder for you. However, there will be some of you who relish the challenge, who like the pressure and the planning, who've been watching all the stupid things I've done and been thinking, I can do better. Well then this is probably your game. I learned three key points when I was playing. One, I'm not as competent a city planner as I originally thought. 
Two, building a socialist utopia is actually very difficult. Three, failure is addictive. Seriously, I could not stop myself from coming back. I don't want to think too deep about what that says about me. It's got that factory sim appeal. You constantly want to keep returning to rethink your original plan, improving flawed designs. I'd gone into the game expecting a city builder with industry elements, but it's not that. Firstly, an important distinction. You aren't building a city, you're creating a nation. The map is huge. I was impressed by City Skylines 2 map size at a hefty 160 square kilometers. This clocks in at a massive 400 square kilometers. That's 160-ish square miles if you want that in freedom measurements. It's not just a bigger scale, it's bigger everything. It's deep and crunchy and yes, confusing. Initially, in some areas, I was thinking it overcomplicates things, but in retrospect, I'm now looking at other games as oversimplifying. After all, food in a warehouse doesn't feed a population. A nation is only as strong as its logistical network. It is a complex game, layers upon layers of systems and mechanics turning together. It may not be the best to look at, but you're not really sitting around and watching your city that much at all. There's no time for that. There's too many fires to put out and train lines to unjam. There is one other key thing to mention. I finished the objectives and built my first somewhat self-sustaining republic, and I classed that as a win. But that was quickly shattered when I realized that that was basically a drawn out tutorial, easy mode. There's so much that wasn't included. Power grids, water and sewage, pollution, crime, social and world events, a fluctuating economy and inflation, manufacturing vehicles, manufacturing planes, airports, helicopters, transit systems, trams, maintaining your vehicles, refueling your vehicles, producing said fuel, ports, ships, ship manufacturing, using resources instead of money to build, making the resources needed for building, concrete, bricks, timber, the list goes on and on. I had only dipped my toe. Out of all the resources in the game, I'd used and utilized maybe one tenth of them in my first Republic. The next campaign kicks things up a notch, introducing more systems. You have to turn a sleepy Eastern European nation into a Soviet powerhouse by seizing the various means of production one by one. And if all that sounds too easy, there's the ultimate challenge, realistic mode. Seasons, events, health crises. Buildings don't just appear with money. You have to provide the resources, the manpower, everything. If you want to experience the stress and despair that comes with building a nation from the ground up, it probably doesn't get more accurate than this. I liked the game a lot. I kept wanting to come back and try new things and I really fell down a deep rabbit hole. Though I am not going to sit here and pretend this is something that everyone will like or that you can learn to like it. For some, this is simply going to prove too much. If you are wary of games becoming overwhelming, you will probably be overwhelmed. If you want a chill, idyllic building experience, there are other titles that provide that better. If you aren't prepared to spend hours learning at the school of trial and error, you will not last long with this. I am not trying to gatekeep, I'm being realistic. If you want a quirky city builder with a novel concept, yes, this has that. But that's only the first layer of it. It is a very complex beast. It isn't the best to look at, it's unpolished in places, and you won't get the tools to build lovely, beautiful, verdant cities. The game is awash with greys and browns and muddy greens. It's not a pretty game. But then again, it isn't trying to be. What it is trying to be is realistic, deep and complex. It's giving control to the player and forcing responsibility for the smallest of details. It makes industry a core pillar, not an appendage. It is a city builder second. First and foremost, it is an unforgiving logistical behemoth. The game is unforgiving. It's got a very steep learning curve and it is difficult. But all those things mean that the rewards are fulfilling. It feels good when things work, when you pull yourself out of a spiral and start making money. When a production chain you've been wrestling with for an hour finally clicks, it is fulfilling. And nothing beats the satisfaction of traveling down your train lines and seeing everything is running smoothly and efficiently and as intended. Ignore that. But that's about all the trains and production chains I can talk about today. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. What was your deal breaker for or against this game? If you played it during early access, are you happy with how the game has come along? Get those comments written and posted down below. And 
And while you're rooting around down there, go give those like and subscribe buttons a click in if you want to see more content like this. And there's a Patreon link in the info box. Socialists might not need money, but I do. Have a look-see there and see if there's anything that floats your boat. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. You've been great. And I will see you next time, comrades.